Thank you so much. There's only one way to go from here, which is um, this way. But we'll do our best to try and stay at least somewhere near the same level. Lieber Sabine, lieber Paul, lieber Bundesminister, Mr. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a very good evening to you all. It's amazing to see this cupola turn into an amphitheater for the evening. Those of us who live here in Vienna have the great fortune to share our lives with some of the most remarkable collections of objects ever assembled. Just a few hundred yards from here, on the Herrengasse, you will find a museum full of handmade globes, both terrestrial and celestial, the most complete of its kind anywhere in the world. They show us the planet that we live on and its tiny place in a much greater universe. In the gardens of the Schönbrunn Palace, we have the oldest zoo in the world, a collection of animals, birds, and other creatures that remind us who we share that planet with. At the Josephinum, we have a museum of medical history with its priceless collection of anatomical models produced by hand in Florence in the late 18th century. Through them, we come closer to understand the miracle that is our own bodies. At the Albertina, just across the park from here, we have the most complete collection of old master drawings anywhere in the world, offering us a glimpse into the minds, ideas, and working processes of some of the greatest artists ever to have lived. At the MAC, the Museum of Applied Arts, we have one of the world's most extensive collections of carpets and textiles from which we learn about the history of migration and trade and the movement of people across the centuries. The list goes on and on and on. And then there is this extraordinary museum, the most astounding collection of all. More than four and a half million objects taking in the period from ancient Egypt until 1800 a span of almost 5,000 years of human endeavor and creativity. The Habsburgs were among the most passionate and unstoppable collectors who ever lived. From their palaces and castles in Prague, Innsbruck, and Vienna, they sent out agents to scour the world for magnificent treasures. The most important collectors among them looked down on us from the top of this remarkable cupola and the treasures that they assembled fill the galleries to our left, to our right, above us, and below us. For most of them, collecting was a private obsession. Objects were kept in libraries, small cabinets of curiosity, private universes for contemplation, pleasure, and play. There are antiquities from Egypt, Greece, and Rome, a Kunstkammer full of gold, silver, ivory and rock crystal, arms and armor, carriages and sleighs, musical instruments, costumes, tapestries, coins and medals, and one of the greatest collections of old master paintings ever put together. And into all of this stepped Wes and Germain. We met at the museum through our good friend Robin almost four years ago, and we spent a very interesting day walking through the museum as they began to take me on a tour of their favorite objects in the museum, it quickly became clear to me that they knew our collections pretty well. And so we embarked on this project together. None of us knew what form or shape it might take, but from the first moment, they threw themselves into it with something of the same playfulness, hunger, and insatiability that the Habsburgs themselves had demonstrated when they collected these objects in the first place. They became, in a sense, collectors themselves. The result is a remarkable exhibition of almost 450 objects spanning the full 5,000 years of our collections. It's the largest exhibition of our collection that we have ever put together, and the very first to include objects from all 14 collections, including the Weltmuseum, the Theatermuseum, and Schloss Ambras. A great many of the objects in the exhibition have been in the same collection for hundreds of years, but are only now meeting for the very first time. Once they had finished looking through the many thousands of objects on display, they began to look at the many more thousands of objects in storage. 
For the final exhibition, more than 350 objects have been brought out of these storage rooms, a great many of them for the very first time. And I must add here that Juman has rather too good a memory. And when we were laying objects out on Friday, she remembered from a previous visit that the, there was a little storage room somewhere tucked a little bit near the gallery. And then the trolley came out, and the trolley came out, and the trolley came out, and the exhibition grew and grew and grew. So you're going to be led around by a little booklet tonight to tell you what all the objects are. It's kind of half useful. Uh, there's a lot more in the show than was originally intended. We're going to be printing this again next week. So good luck trying to identify everything as you walk around. In the few instances, what I want to say, on the whole, they left alone the great masterpieces and the heroic history paintings, and they looked instead for what had previously been overlooked. And in the few instances where important objects were removed from their showcases in our galleries, they've been replaced by the most exquisite pencil drawings made by Juman. The soul of the objects remains intact. Walking through the exhibition over the weekend, it became clear to all of us for the first time how much it reflects them. It's often said that collectors are in fact collecting pieces of themselves. I think the same thing is often the case with curators. And just as collecting, when it's done well, can be an extraordinarily creative activity, so too can curating. What you will see downstairs is itself a piece of art. Working with curators from outside the museum world represents a challenge for our institution, for any institution. Wes and Juman have asked us to do things that we've simply never done before, selecting objects with which we were ourselves unfamiliar and presenting them in a manner quite unlike anything we're accustomed to. I'll not lie, there were times when it has felt as if we were participants in some insane Japanese game show having to climb up a slippery wall or eat live fish with chopsticks. But it also feels as if somehow, miraculously, against the odds, we won. And our prize is a beautiful, thoughtful, poetic, intense, and unforgettable exhibition curated by two beautiful, thoughtful, poetic, intense, and unforgettable people. There are, in a project of this size and scale, a few people that need to be thanked. Many of them have already been thanked. I would like to add my thanks to those. First and foremost, my wonderful colleagues here at the museum, the curators from all 14 collections who helped identify objects for the exhibition and made possible hundreds of loans, the brilliant and endlessly patient conservators who checked, packed, moved, and in some cases painstakingly restored objects so that they could be part of the exhibition, a special word of thanks in this regard goes to the Kunstkammer, who gave up one of their galleries downstairs for us to use for the exhibition. Nikolaus Koisch from the Exhibitions Department organized the movement and installation of every single work, liaising with dozens and dozens of people in every single department of the museum. And everyone else from publications, press, events, graphic design, fundraising, education, and security have all contributed an enormous amount to the project. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that we feel immensely proud to work for a museum that can mount exhibitions of this caliber, and not just one, but as Sabina mentioned, two, with the quite breathtaking display of the paintings and drawings and prints of Peter Bruegel the Elder in the galleries behind me. I'd like to thank the one lender to the exhibition, our sister museum across the Maria Theresienplatz, the Natural History Museum, they were unfailingly helpful, lending each and every object that Wes and Juman asked for. An armadillo? Sure. An owl? Sure. Piece of petrified wood? Take your pick. A 19th century glass jellyfish that has never been lent in 125 years? Sure. All of them. A special word of thanks also needs to go to the emu at the emu farm in Schoenberg am Kamp, about 80 kilometers outside of Vienna, who laid three beautiful eggs specially for the exhibition. <laughs> it is very nice to see that the Habsburg tradition of commissioning great works of art continues to this day. I'd like to thank Jason Schwartzman for helping us to record the exhibition's audio guide yesterday. Uh, the ink is drying on a contract for you to do this for us on a permanent basis. 
Uh, a project of this scale would not be possible without the support of a great deal of sponsors and funders. I'd like to add my thanks to Quadrat uh, for the walls and walls of wonderful fabric in the exhibition, to Bank Goodman, the American Embassy, and the many generous private individuals who helped, to Norbert Kettner and his amazing team at Wien Tourismus. Itai Margala was the exhibition's architect. Good architects, I think, are a little bit like sponges. Uh, they perform a function that we can't perform with our own hands. We take them to some pretty dark places, uh, but they always spring back into shape, uh, ready to go again. And Itai was the greatest of all sponges uh, I've ever worked with. Thank you for the hundreds and hundreds of hours that you've worked on the exhibition. <laughs> Next time you see a random call from me on your mobile phone, you might want to just not answer it. Um, and thank you also to your brilliant team of Nora and Jane. The exhibition was built by Firma Bruckschweiger, and I've never seen a group of men work harder and longer hours with such good humor. A huge thanks to them. <laughs> they ate their body weight in pizza about six times over the course of the last week. Um, more than 400 objects were installed in the exhibition by Vienna Art Handling, and every single one of them was lit by Gustavo Bernasconi, who worked. <laughs> Gustavo. <laughs> Gustavo worked through several nights to get the exhibition ready. Thank you very much, Gustavo. Gracias. Uh, I'd like to thank the Fondazione Prada who've been partners in the project from a very early stage. Mucha Prada was with us here yesterday to see the exhibition, which will travel to Milan next year. The noise volume behind me is going up, so I'm going to uh, finish. Uh, I'd like to give thanks to my director, Sabina Haag, uh, who invited me to... <laughs> I'd like to thank Sabina, who invited me to begin working with this museum around seven, eight years ago now, and has supported every single exhibition that we've done uh, ever since. And finally, I would like to thank our wonderful curators, Wes and Juman, mixing you up. Uh, thank you for giving us your time, your energy, your, imagine and your imagination, and this quite beautiful exhibition. Thank you for taking a risk with us, and thank you for bearing with us while we learn to take risks with you. As Dominique de Menil, a hero we have in common, once said, the gifted artists are the great benefactors of the world. Well, they don't come more gifted than you. Thank you so much. <laughs>